with a roommate and emergency room change, you need to make sure that the $200 fee is paid or gets approval for, and that can only be approved by Anna, Dave, Mom Law. Uh, yes. For ambulance calls, yes. is it still protocol for the RAs? Is it, I can't remember. If, supposed to if you have that. to call, if an RA has to call an ambulance, they can either call the RD to come and double check to make sure, mm -hmm. or if they're like, they want to just, you know, do we really need to call? That's fine. But most of the time, it's just so that the RD knows that there is an ambulance because, say, Mama Law is parking her car and she's coming in and she calls the RD and goes, Why is there an ambulance here? We want to be able to relay the information saying, Oh, there was a, there was a student that was intoxicated. She needed to go to the ambulance, the emergency room. That's why the RA is called the ambulance. We don't technically have to get out and go check and make that call. You guys, especially as the year progresses, will have that mindset on when and when not to. In the beginning, though, for some reason, I think it was like it was relayed to them that if you have to call the ambulance, you need to call the RD to come. And that's fine because in the beginning people are unsure and have questions. But right now I tend to not get a call to double check because everyone can kind of make that judgment now. Um, you will sometimes have to go to the office on the weekends and meet with residents regarding issues. Um, sometimes you will be surprised and their parents will be with them and that's when you that's when you switch into that director position. You are someone that a lot of the times they don't realize that you are only 20, 21. They think you're a bit older. They think that you are um, this more powerful person than you really are, but you work <laughs> it. You work what you got. <laughs> and um, that's why it's also important to look presentable. Um, parent phone calls, like Anna said, let them vent. Let them do what they want to do and then give them options. Make sure that you're letting them know you hear them out and you are wanting what's best for their student, for their child. A lot of these parents, you don't know the type of family situation they're in. You don't know if this is their first child, if it's their second, third, fourth child. Um, so you wanna make sure that you are comforting them but also letting them know what you can and can't do and giving those options. Um, so wait, parent phone calls, do they, um, is that scheduled? No, sometimes the desk will call you because a parent's on the phone, really upset about a situation that happened at night, this roommate threw, like, her child's stuff in the pool, pool or dumpster and they want something done about it right now, they want to talk to a director and that's when you come into play because that type of stuff it might it might lead to calling in Anna or Dave, but that's where you do the the levels. You see if you can take care of the situation, um, and then try to do this, right? so on. Calls from RA. So questions or concerns. We get a lot of calls whether or not um, you know. Hey, we don't know what to do with this. Do we dump this out? Do we? Do we put this away? Like, can we write them up? Blah, blah, blah. And that's why it's so important to know information because we've had issues where, you know, RAs want to key into a room. There's no point to keying in that room. We don't have that power. We don't have that authority. Like, we have to know the rules. Like, that's why they, the handbooks, read them. So, like, when you are in the admin meetings, focus, retain that information because you don't know when you are going to be using it. Um, another thing I forgot to add on here is types of calls could be to go into rooms. If there's an emergency situation and the residents aren't answering the door or if the residents answer the door and then shut the door. That is an emergency situation because you don't know what they're doing in there. They might have a girl in there who's intoxicated. They may have a guy in there who's intoxicated. They may be hiding things, they may be all passed out and the water's running and there could be flood damage and that did happen this year. Um, but that type of thing, that's when you will get called. If 
But before you key in, and this is very important, before you key in, you need to make sure you know that there is someone in there. Because if you guys, if you go to your RAs and you say, hey, um, what's, like, why do you need to key, get keyed in? Oh, they're not answering. Well, sometimes the music just could be playing loud and they forgot to turn it off. Now, that's, that's kind of like a sticky situation because you need to turn it off because it is disturbing the community. But that is a situation where you aren't getting the privilege to go into their suite and they have that right. And because of just like the years and the situations, there's a lot more legal things that you have to take into consideration before acting. And so keying in just because you think there's someone in there or because you thought you heard voices, that's not a good enough reason. You can write up the room for what you think and then that's when you meet with the room and the hearing and someone, you'll say, hey, they thought they heard your voices, they can say yes, they can say no, more likely they'll say no, but that's not a reason for you to key into a room. So keying into a room and that will be something that will go more in depth into train when we train, that will be something that you will have to talk it through because that's where you kind of get on the borderline of, okay, how much legal action can I take by not crossing that that illegal line. And if you guys aren't sure, you can call me, and me giving you approval now puts that the legal aspect of it on me. I'm now taking responsibility for your action because I either, because I either gave you permission or I didn't give you permission. So now that's falling on me. Yeah. Because like once you key into a room, what you see in that room, you have to take, like it's your responsibility then to document it. And a lot of the times what you document, it's really hard. Say you find like 10 bongs and 20 kilos, kilos of cocaine. That's a lot. <laughs> or it's fine. Whatever. Bags yes. of cocaine. <laughs> Bags of cocaine, like you have to document it. but. That's something that it gets super sticky because we didn't get permission to walk in. There wasn't even someone in the room at that time. And then that's when Anna and Dave spend a week dealing with that one situation when they that could have been avoided and it could have been handled differently. Um, any questions about types of calls? No. Okay. What you need to know. Now this is very important because... Wait, sorry. I have one about calls. If someone calls you and you're on duty and they say, are you busy? When you're on duty, your answer is always no. Okay? No, I'm not busy because right then and there, that is your job. If you slip and you say, yes, I'm, I'm just, I'm walking here, I'm walking there. And they say, okay, never mind. And they hang up. You call them right back and you say, what do you need? What is wrong? What is the situation? Okay, because the RAs aren't going to want to bug you because they they feel like they're always constantly calling you, they're being bothersome, um, but they don't realize that that's your job. So don't let them not give you an answer. Don't let them not tell you what's going on and give you the responsibility because that is part of your, your job. If you're dealing with a situation and you get another call, and they ask, are you busy? You can say no, and then they'll explain them like, okay, well, I'm dealing with something right now, but I'll be right there. That's when you can then explain to them, I'll, like, it's gonna be a while. And that's when you can then also decide, is the situation you're dealing with now something that can wait because you have to deal with this one first, or can you deal with this and then go to that one? Yes, Jane. That was my stomach. Um, so, okay, this is just, just to clarify. Mm -hmm. I've, like, been at the desk a few times and they like, called RD on duty and said, oh, like, and there's a person who needs a new key to me, something like that. And that person said, like, oh, well, I'll, I'll be, like, walking, I'll be, at, I'll be, like, I'll be over in, like, 10 minutes, so just tell them to hang up and wait. Or, like, I'm wait. going over there in 10 minutes, so I'll do it then. Is yeah. that... Mm -hmm. because, do that? because you can be yeah. 15 minutes away in, like, a, a key like that, some options are you make the key and they come back, tw the, the resident comes back 20 minutes later. You make them a lockout key 
so that they can get into the room and then when they bring the lockout key, you have the key made for them. Does that make sense? Yes. Like while they wait, they yeah. can go back to their room. Um, so there are options so that they, they're not just sitting there at the desk. Now villas in a, in a Del Norte key is a little bit different because it takes time for someone to lock them out and then they have to bring a key back in. You guys don't have any access with that. But that's where sometimes if say I'm 15 minutes off property, I, can, I have four other people I can call to see if they are, like sometimes Juliet's just in the back office and the person at the desk thankfully doesn't go and bug her for every key that needs to be made. But if I say, went to the store real fast, I can call Julia and go, hey, are you in the back office still? She can say yes, or no, I'm in my room. And I can be like, well, there's a key that needs to be made. Do you mind going to make it real fast? Like, that's where you help each other out. But most of the so time- So if it's like me, I'm planning on going over to, to the little 10, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you, is it okay if I say like, well, I'm gonna be there in 10 minutes, so can I do it then? You ideally want to, I, to rush whatever... Yeah. yeah, this concern was primarily because whatever. she wants the information to get to you. If someone calls and you brush it off by saying you're busy, mm -hmm. she doesn't yeah. want that... Occurred. You want to... If, it, if it's a, just strictly yeah. a key situation, more than likely you drop what you're doing and you go to the key. You don't wait until you're going over there. Okay, thank you. That was that's, yeah. that's the answer. Um, because it is your job yeah. and if, you can always go back yeah. to whatever you were doing. Yeah. If you just got out of the shower, you can say, I just got out of the shower, I need to put some clothes on. Because that happened to me when I was holding yeah. the phone. A girl called me at, at Gardens and I said, okay, just got out of the shower, I need to put some clothes on, I'll be over. But it's your job. And, and, yeah. So I do, and I like to do it like a race. Like sometimes I time myself, like over spring break, I would time myself from, no, it's really fun. It's like you time yourself from gardens to Del Norte to see how long it takes you. And like one time I was getting out of the 